What's up guys, this is Hatayat 7 RCT bringing you another video for you guys. I hope everybody out there is doing well. Um, as you can see, and you know, by the background and stuff, and by me donning the Nintendo jacket, there are reasons for that. Number one, of course, is that the weather is kind of chilly around this time, so yeah, I need something to... Uh, and number two, of course, and more importantly, uh, I'm going to be doing two videos back-to-back, -back, Nintendo-centric. Now, why is that an issue, or why is that a thing? Basically, as you guys must have noticed, the past few weeks or months, I've been doing a lot of system-centric um, showcases or videos and stuff. Um, going back to some of the more forgotten systems of the past. Now, of course, you guys know I have been a very, like from the beginning, a Nintendo uh, fan, not fanboy. Please know the distinction. And, um, of course, I love covering their stuff. You know, everything from, you know, Switch, Super Nintendo, which is my favorite system, GameCube, so on and so forth. Uh, however, two, well, actually one that I haven't covered as much or at all, basically, uh... I think I did one a long time ago, but it wasn't really up there to my standards, so to speak. Um, so that's the first one we're going to be doing today, and that's the Nintendo 64. Uh, Nintendo 64, of course, is a system that right now at this present time during this year, we're still asking ourselves, is this going to be the next iteration of the Mini? Because we already have the NES Mini and we have the SNES Mini which I am very, very happy with. So the next evolution would be, you know, natural choice would be the N64. Now, of course, I would prefer a GameCube Mini at this point because, again, the, after the SNES, that's my second favorite console. But the N64 has this unique placing among history where for many it was like... A step backwards and for many others was a step forward now of course Nintendo has always had the history of you know choosing cartridge over uh, CD base uh, storage formats and that has cost them dearly I don't have to repeat you know make a big list of where they slipped and how it affected sales and stuff like that because that's not what I'm all about I'm not about you know sale numbers and stuff like that but it did um, put Nintendo 64 in a bit of a pickle because, of course, at the time with the competing platforms having CD base and basically unlimited storage for the time, um, it, it left basically many of the Nintendo 64 games kind of lacking in terms of the way that the games were structured. Now, again, I don't want to go too much into the history of it. There's plenty of videos out there that explain the history. And, of course, there are a lot of people who are cited either for or against the system. People don't like it. There are people who do. I'm the one in the, in the latter. I love this system. Loved it when it came out. Was there day one to purchase it. Uh, amassed a huge library of, of games at the time even though the selection was not nearly close enough as the SNES, but it did have some great games. And that's what this video is all about, highlighting some of those games. So without further ado, and just so you guys know, the next one I'm going to be doing, even though I have covered SNES in the past, my favorite, uh, I will be covering import games. Now, a lot of the really, really good import games we kind of missed out back in the day, but... That video is for another time. Enjoy this. All right, guys, so let's do this. Uh, before launching, I wanted to mention really quick that, and this is my personal opinion, of course, um, the N64 being one of the coolest systems, classic system out there, in my opinion, it has this little thing, and it's that the graphics do not hold up as well as other classic consoles, for example, like the Sega Saturn. Now, I'm not saying that the graphics are bad, I'm saying that playing them now, in the present, 
with you know our modern monitors and stuff like that no crt or whatever it's way better experience to have them you know be at a higher resolution with some of the effects on and stuff like that i think you will enjoy it much more than watching the standard resolution the same thing happens don't think it's just the n64 same thing happens with the playstation 1 go and try to play that back at the standard resolution and stuff like that and you're gonna go like oh you know this one the n64 at least has a bit of charm in most of them because they weren't shooting for hyper realism or anything like that that being said i'm just gonna shut up about that and focus on the games i have a favorites list here because if i go through the whole lot of all the titles that were released it's really gonna take a ton of time to go through them all so i'm gonna put this out there you guys want me to do a series on this and focus on all the titles i will do just that just leave a comment down below and i will do that for the purpose of this video however i'm going to focus on some of the titles that i have here on my favorites they're not complete because there's more but i wanted to keep the favorites list to a minimum so i don't have to be dragging through all of these to, to reach, you know my favorite titles so that being said let's start alphabetically here of course well that needs to be here armorings pretty amazing title uh, back in the day banjo kazooie now just to uh, give an example of what i'm talking about the resolution and stuff let's boot up banjo really quick loading loading complete might have to because I remember, if I remember correctly, this one has a pretty long intro, and length is not something that I want for video, so let's see. settings that you have on a specific emulator, you're going to set things for, you know, polygonal aspects of the game to be in high res, as it is here. Some of the 2D stuff, of course, is still going to be blurry, but, you know, that can't be helped. But it still looks really, really good. you know the old school feeding without having to deal with the blurriness and all the, you know, the, the crap res that you're going to be seeing on an lcd screen now i'm hoping even though i know that's not realistic i'm hoping that if uh, n64 mini ever comes out i hope nintendo includes some kind of feature that allows to upscale these games so they look really good and the artwork shines through instead of being buried behind the low res or whatever. Yeah, this is gonna take a while and anybody who's been a Nintendo fan for a long time knows how badass the game is so let me skip this, come right out. Give you an example like this one right here you might loading notice some skipping a loading little bit. complete but this is a very good example of what i'm talking about in terms of the res and stuff now i enjoyed a lot this title when it came out because of course the uh, 64 had a lot of uh let's say uh, certain point it had a lack of uh, racing games until all of these you know san francisco rush and gt and a whole bunch of others started coming out later on 
and the life cycle of the system. And this was one of the, the first ones that came out. I remember playing the Lamborghini one. I had a little bit of fun with that one, but I didn't keep it in my collection for a very long time. This one I felt, that, however, was Racing. a bit different. Welcome. One player. And I really found it fun. Single race. Full grid. Okay. Good choice. Nice wheel. I'm gonna go really quick through all of these just to get into the gameplay real quick. Welcome to Coventry Co. Get ready. This one, this one had something going. It really looked good. Loading. One of the more visually Loading pleasing complete. titles that came out at the time, and not a lot of people, I don't know, remember it for some reason anymore. But it was a really cool an Argonaut. I mean, the, the same people behind Star Fox. There's another title I, I think is pretty underappreciated. I remember that I got some really nice reviews at the time that it released, but for some reason I just got like forgotten among the, the, the classics of the system. Now the control, I don't have, I think, set up the way I should. But that is not the fault of the game, of course, that's the fault of myself, because I did not set up the controls for something like this. Reason why I won't have any, um, at least on, on this video, I won't have any of the first person shooters, because I need to set up, like, the C-stick, um, not the C-stick, the C-buttons, camera buttons. you a lot of exploration it gives you a lot of shooting and stuff and mission based stuff you know it's kind of like a cute version of i don't know any third person uh shooter that has elements of exploration you know that's probably probably because of the cuteness of the title it got forgotten or people didn't really pay much attention to it but it's a really good game Let me give this Loading. one a spin real quick. Loading complete. Again, I'm not gonna be even close to 
showcasing all of them because there's too many for just one video and I don't want to turn Interplay this into presents. a video version of a stream so bear with me guys clay fight let's pick the snowman because he's crabby like me Self serious actually makes fun of itself, and it just ends up being a very fun time. next one because I'm not faring very well here. Now Conker's bad for a day. I, I don't even need to mess with this one now because you know everybody everybody knows how amazing this freaking title is. That shit crazy. It just it's a great, it's a great title. Cruising USA, or Cruising Exotic in this case. Now this one I have to go, I have to give Loading. it a spin because... Loading complete. This is one of the must-have titles. If Nintendo releases a, a mini, it has to be in there. Because as much as I love Mario Kart 64, this one... And I bet that most of my friends agree. This one was extremely, extremely fun to, to play. And the added world and story and stuff like that made it even better. Not gonna even mess with the controls, I'm gonna go straight in.
this looks really, really nice. Hello, friend. Bye bye for now. I gotta change the game. Let's get out of here. Doom 64 is really good and probably not appreciated as Loading much either, complete. at least as a classic, you know, Nintendo 64 title. But it is, for many, one of the best Dooms out there. It is a fan favorite for a lot of the Doom fans. I'm not gonna play too much of it, just to show you enough to show you guys how it looks. Um, and of course, there's the issue of the controls, which I don't have mapped to my liking, so bear with me. I'm gonna look like an idiot. Plus, it's a little dark. Let me brighten things a bit here. Next up, <laughs> loading F Zero. I cannot loading make a complete. video if I do not include F Zero. I will probably just leave the video running right now, recording, and just listen to the music for a little bit, and that will make me feel very happy. don't need to say much about F-Zero and Dino. They're amazing racers, an amazing franchise which needs 
needs to make an appearance on the Switch. Please, Nintendo, make it happen. This one, in terms of speed and the soundtrack, is uh... and the difficulty, of course, because this one is much more difficult than the GameCube version. Jet Force Gemini, another one from Rare, another one that's underrated, uh, and by the way Aaron, if you're watching this video, this is the one that I alluded to many many times, this is a badass game, amazing sound graphics, as you can see widescreen at the time, and overall super super difficult game, particularly the bosses, are brutal but it's just freaking amazing and one of the franchises that I wish would come to newer platforms but I guess they're tied up with Rare and Microsoft and all that stuff so I don't think we're gonna get to see any of it But back in the day when this came out, even with the low res, even with the limitation of, I don't know, the storage space and all that stuff that the system was lacking, it did so many things, even with the cutesy art and stuff, it made for some impressive visuals at the time. And cleaning up the the image kind of helps a little bit, but it's not the same impact as huh? when you played it the first time around. It's just an amazing game. Daikatana, I I don't have enough words. Just look up a uh, any YouTube video on Daikatana and yeah. You guys know with your killer instinct I need to play a little bit of this. Loading, Loading complete. At least I won't have to wait too much. Another one of the Sellers for the concept launch game, of course. Very 
very convincing title to sell people on the power of the N64. Oh my god, where do I have my buttons here? getting my ass handed to me on these games today but it's okay you guys get the point amazing title it holds up pretty well with um, against uh, the arcade version really really good fighter if of course you know where you have your buttons and button placement and all that good stuff <laughs> Kirby games are great. Zelda, do I need to say more? Now there's a few here, aside from the regulars, of course, Mario Kart, you've seen Mario Kart over and over again. Mario Party was fun, tennis, Mega Man 64, which was Mega Man Legends, another fun title and this one from Treasure. Mischief Maker. Oh my. Yeah, it was crazy, wacky, but extremely fun. Mortal Kombat. Oh, the battle, another one. Really, really good. Loading. Loading complete. I'm hoping this one runs well because there's a lot going on in the game in terms of geometry and stuff like that. I think it should. And this one holds up pretty well also because of a lot of polygonal stuff going on, which when you convert it into high res, it looks really good. Two D is a little blurry and stuff, but still looks good. Yahoo! Not gonna view map. I'm not gonna check controls. It's all quick and dirty. And I crashed it. <laughs> Even though I didn't make it, that was really a lot of fun. And that was just a little bit of the game. Oh boy. Both quakes in here. This one, I think I'm gonna end it. Loading. Yes, and not make the Loading video so that long, but you guys get the idea. There's plenty of freaking amazing N64 games, and I'm hoping that 
the N64 Mini does become a thing. But I hope that it comes with a little bit of a tweaking Corneria, on the graphics side. Fourth planet of the Lilat system. The evil Andros. And thank the Lord, I can skip. It's about time you showed up, Fox. You're the only hope for our world. I'll do my best. Andros won't have his way with me. Good luck. Now, I'm one of the very few people who actually liked Star Fox on the Wii U. Open the wing. And even though it was different and it was dependent and reliant on the gamepad, which I'm not against, to be honest, that was the thing for the Wii U. A lot of people yeah, hated on it system. because, let's be honest, a lot of people love to hate on the Wii U. From the first time it was ever announced to basically its death, it was just hated on by so many people who just wanted it to fail. But here. I'm okay. that game could have been better, but it wasn't as bad as a lot of people ahead. made it to be. That being said, I'm a huge Star Fox fan, and I hope that a version comes out for Switch. I have, of course, purchased every single copy of Star Fox that has ever released, including the 3DS one. With probably the exception of uh, Star Fox Command on the S. We're entering Corneria City now. But yeah. Everybody, stay alert! Ooh, we got him up the bridge there. You've got an enemy on your tail! Use the brake! So yeah, Star Fox in a nutshell. Really, really cool stuff. A shoot 'em up. Yay, a shoot 'em up. Loading complete. You have to do this one. Just on principle alone. Let's go normal mode. Use a blue ship because reasons. Mission oh. one. Rumbling. Thank you, sir.
soldier. I'm so tempted to go with this one. Had tons of fun, but the Dreamcast version looked much, much better. But this one, I don't know, this one played so good. Super Mario 64, I'm not even gonna go there because everybody and their mother know how good that game was. Smash, of course, same thing. And of course, the best game of all time Superman 64. Just kidding, guys. I wouldn't do that to you. The Turok series, all of them. Aces. Just freaking amazing games. Not gonna go into because of controls, but amazing. Also, Vigilante 8, the closest the N64 got to a twisted metal type game. Really good. And of course, the best wrestling, in my opinion, on the 64 out of all of the wrestling games that I got, but that's just me. The last game that I'm going to be playing here is going to be the Wave Race. Because, yeah, we're almost at the end of the... Let's do Wave Race 64 Loading. really quick. Loading complete. Another game that did a whole ton of amazing stuff right. And it did it from the get-go. that with the settings that I have it with, higher resolution and stuff, Wait, it doesn't right. chuck. Let's go start up the race, I'm not going to warm up or anything, Select your water I know craft, I'm rusty as hell. Standard everything, let me standard everything. I just want to show you guys Welcome how nice to it is. Sunny Beach. Perfect, let's go. Water, beautiful water physics that until now was only seen in the Sega arcade version of you know, jet skiing and stuff, but nothing that would come close on the consoles, of course. Then uh, the GameCube did one better by adding a whole bunch of everything, making it look even better. Whole bunch of them retire and i think that's the perfect cue for me to end the video i should retire sorry you didn't accumulate enough points to move on to the next round i understand Better sir next time no no problem so yeah guys that is going to conclude at least my n64 uh, showcase not complete by far by any means but gives you an idea of how cool this system is and how nice it would be for a mini version to come out with some tweak features I think it would be a smash hit like the rest so that's gonna be all guys uh, thanks for watching please sub like and subscribe and catch you on the next one